NATO's mulling counter moves to challenge what the head of the alliance called Russia's reluctance to, quote, consider us a partner, end quote. In an interview to the European press, Andrus Falk Rasmussen outlined NATO's latest plans for Eastern Europe. Now, that includes ensuring par uh, permanent international armed deployments on Russian doorsteps. NATO already has a so-called response force, but Rasmussen believes it now needs to be spearheaded. He also spoke of closer ties with Ukraine. The alliance is to decide the amount of aid it will send over to Kiev, which is currently involved in a bloody crackdown on opposition forces on its own territory. Let's get more analysis on this uh, on the interview from James Corbett, who's the editor of the Corbett Report and independent Japan-based news outlet. James, good to see you again. So how much of a game changer is all this for Europe? Well, sadly, the fact that NATO Secretary General Anders Fogh Rasmussen and the NATO powers generally have been exposed as liars over their repeated promises in recent years that there would not be the establishment of a permanent military base in Eastern Europe it comes as no surprise to anyone who understands that this is just part of a string of broken promises that NATO has strewn behind them for the past two and a half decades, going back at least to the point in 1990, where, according to both former uh, Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev and former U.S. Ambassador to Russia Jack Matlock, as well as declassified documents of meetings between the former Ger German so uh, foreign minister and Soviet foreign minister, that there was cl a clear commitment made at that time in 1990 during the German reunification process that NATO would not expand eastward into Europe. In fact, the quote was uh, not a thumb's width further to the east. And of course, that has been broken uh, time and time again over the past two and a half decades uh, to the point where we're now actually at, at the point where NATO is situating missile defense shield uh, uh, sites in Poland and in Romania, deploying guided missile destroyers to Rota, Spain over the next two years as part of the NATO missile shield, and of course culminating with Obama's announcement in June that uh, $1 billion would be put towards a European security fund specifically to help Poland and other Jeez. Eastern European NATO allies. Uh, this is just another part of that, that bigger picture that shows that NATO is not committed to peace and stability in the region. They are looking to be the dominant military power. James, so much information that you've just given us, but I just want to touch on what Rasmussen has just said. He said uh, he's going, he kept avoiding the term permanent base, but when asked if there would be permanent NATO international deployments, he said yes. So what does that mean? Well, it means whatever they want it to mean at this point. I think this is still the mealy mouth diplomatic language that is used uh, so that whatever eventuates from this, they get to say that it was part of the plan all along. I think we have to read this as, as a commitment towards the establishment of permanent military bases, specifically because that has been on the table now for a number of years and has been actively denied. So I think the, the fact that they are um, not coming out and saying this and they are not specifying where these bases will be situated is just part of the uh, the diplomatic dance that's taking place right now. But uh, but we have to understand that there is a permanent military deployment that is being considered right now that is, uh, that is a absolutely a mark of brinksmanship that is bringing the world closer to global war and confrontation. How far will NATO go in supporting Ukraine? Well, that uh, really depends on how far that uh, that they, they they feel that they can go, and unfortunately, I don't think that there's any boundary to that. Obviously, Ukraine has been involved in a, in a, a, a diplomatic effort with with NATO to become a member since, at the very least, since the 2008 application to the NATO membership action plan, and uh, unfortunately, that process is taking place in the uh, still continuing to take place in the midst of this Ukrainian crisis, which is itself an incredible mark of provocation and. Uh, uh, clearly, again, a sign of a commitment not to peace or stability or to the easing of tensions, but to the increasing of those tensions. And unfortunately, Poland also holds the card of ha uh, being able to invoke Article 5 of the North Atlantic Treaty, the founding document of NATO, which allows any member that feels itself to be under attack to uh, to call on the collective self-defense of NATO as a whole, which, of course, would allow NATO to really react and interact with uh, Ukraine in any way that they feel would be justified in that scenario. So that's, uh, again, I think the single greatest uh, threat to peace on the planet at this moment. Why is Russia then... Um say no longer willing to be a partner as NATO puts it I mean that's the way they see it 
Uh, this is, of course, intended to uh, to be a slight against, for example, Russia withdrawing from the, uh, the the talks, the negotiations that have been going on with NATO over the missile shield that NATO has been deploying ostensibly to counter Iran, but it's being situated in Poland and Romania, clearly uh, intended to, uh, to be a, uh, targeting Russia. So I think Russia is now uh, understanding that NATO is acting in bad faith, that they are not going to fulfill their obligations, commitments or promises, as is again being displayed today. And uh, as a part of that, NATO is now calling uh, Russia names in an effort to try to discredit them in this process and to point fingers away from what they are doing themselves. James Cobbett, as always, giving us a lot to chew on. The editor of The Cobbett Report, live here on RT. Thank you.